Hey guys, it's Helena and welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be talking all about astrocartography today. This is going to be an intro 101 video about astrocartography, what it is and how we can use it to travel, move to new places that will best support us in the different areas of our life. But before we get started with today's video, I just want to let you know that I am offering one-on-one -on -one readings in astrocartography per personalized video calls where I take you through your astrocartography map and show you the different places in the world that would best support you in your different areas of life, whether that's finding the love of your life, finding a sense of peace and joy in your home life, good place to retire, or maybe that's finding career success and being publicly recognized in your line of work. Combining my years of study in astrology and astrocartography, I share the deeper and richer story behind your soul's involvement here on this beautiful planet. It's been such a joy reading for so many of you guys in the last few weeks, and it is just such a treat for me to connect one-on-one -on -one with you guys and share more about your life with the stars. So if you'd like more information, I will include a link down below in the description, helenawoods.com. You can find more details on my readings, my offerings, and I'm excited to work with you. So without further ado, let's get into it. What is astrocartography? Astrocartography is the astrology of place. It's also known as astrolocality, relocation astrology, travel astrology, and on astro.com, it's known under the feature Astro Click Travel. Based on your natal chart, when you were born, there is a map that corresponds to where the different planets were at the specific time that you were born on different areas of the globe. And when you travel to those certain places in the world, there are certain energies. Some are more supportive and beneficial for you in different areas of your life. Others are more challenging and growth filled. And when you go to these energies, you will feel it. When you travel to positive lines that are luckier, for example, a Jupiter line or a Sun line, you will have more opportunities. You will have lucky breaks. You will experience a more positive feeling and energy when you're there. When you travel to a hard line, the experience traveling there or living there is hard. It feels challenging. It can feel like you're spinning your wheels and not moving anywhere. And it's really crazy because I've traveled to so many places in the world. I've lived in lots of different parts of the world and I have found astrocartography to be so eerily accurate with the energies that I experience or the things that I experience while I am staying on those lines. And so in this video, I want to share with you a basic intro lesson to how how you can find your astrocartography map and read it and understand where in the world holds more beneficial or challenging energies for you. If you're interested to see your map, you can go to astro.com and go down to the bottom and click astro click travel and enter in your birth information. And you want to make sure that your exact time of birth is accurate because even if the time's a little off, it could completely change your map. So once you enter in your data, you will see your map. And when you look first look at your map, it's going to look very confusing. And if you haven't studied astrology or know what all the different planetary meanings or how certain planets work together and the relationships between planets, it's going to be very confusing when you first look at it. But just know that when you pull up that map, you're going to see longitudinal lines scattered all over the world. And when you zoom in to a place that you're living now, or maybe the place that you were born, or maybe a place that you want to travel to soon, you zoom in and look at the color of the line and the planet that's associated with that line. And that planet and the energy of the planet is going to tell you basically the energy that you're going to feel when you're there. I'm actually going to be making a full video series on the different planets, their meanings, and my own personal experiences traveling to these different lines. But basically, you want to know that the most positive lines are Jupiter and the Sun and Venus, 
and the more negative or more unpreferable or challenging locations are going to be Mars, Saturn, and maybe Pluto too. Those are just some of the main planets, but I'm going to be making a full playlist of videos here on this channel sharing about the different planets and their meanings on those lines and also my own personal experience traveling and living on those lines and how it's really affected my life on an external and internal level. Now I'm just gonna give you a quick breakdown of the different planets and their meanings so that you can pull up your own chart if you'd like. Obviously each planet goes very in depth and in detail and if you wanna um, have an astrocartography reading with me, I'd be happy to go deeper on this with you and tell the broader, deeper story of, of your map. But the sun, let's start with the sun. The sun is very solar, it's very external, it's very warm, generous. It is where we are seen by other and it's a very public energy and it's where we shine in life. The moon is very private. It's all about our emotional needs, our emotional desires and the things emotionally that will best fulfill us. It also has to do with home and belonging and family and feeling loved. Uh, the moon is very mysterious and quiet. It's also a, a nurturing planet. So when we go to a moon line, it's going to feel more feminine, more soft, more intuitive and more nurturing, but also a little bit more emotional. If we go to a Mars line, Mars, depending on your chart, um, either your most difficult planet in your chart will be Saturn or Mars, um, but that, that has to deal with more with going into the details of your chart. But Mars is a hard planet. It is um, angry, it is frustrated, it's also driven and ambitious. If you really want to get something done, like a project done, go to a Mars MC line. But Mars has to do with motivation, drive, stamina. Neptune is spirituality, the unconscious, the unseen mysteries of life. Chiron is the wounded healer. It is the part of us that's vulnerable and could be time for some healing there when you go to a Chiron line. It might be time to heal some parts of you. It's a very kind energy, but it's, it's vulnerable. Mercury is communication, writing, speaking, teaching, learning, it is all has to do with the mind and the mental state. So going to a Mercury line is going to be great for writing and teaching and speaking. Jupiter is the line of abundance, good luck, good fortune, opportunities, blessings. It also expands the energy of nearby energies and planetary lines around it. Uranus is also surprises, rebellion, and changing society. Pluto is death, transformation, and rebirth, very powerful energy. Saturn is delay, restriction, order discipline and uh, challenge. And lastly, one of my favorite planets, Venus. Venus is love, partnership, beauty, um, marriage, art, beautiful things, simple joys, all of the beautiful Venusian aesthetics and like beautiful things is very Venus energy. So Venus is really great for the home and just for a feeling of being beautiful and appreciating the beauty that's around you. When there are no lines or there's a lot of space between lines, that means that the energy of that place is going to be neutral. There's not really any growth happening, no expansion, but there's also nothing beneficially supporting you in that area of the world. So I always find it's really best to live on a supportive line if you can. Obviously, if you were born on a hard line or you're traveling to a hard line, that's okay. There's a lot of growth involved in living or traveling to a negative line. And I like to follow the stoic notion of things are not good or bad in life. Things are preferable or unpreferable. And often in the unpreferable areas of our life, in the unpreferable seasons and chapters and planetary lines, there's a lot of growth and expansion and learning lessons to be had on those lines. And that is a benefit in and of itself. One of the key things you want to know about Asher Card photography is that if you want to prove a certain area of your life, for example, if you're an artist or a creative person and you want more exposure in your career or more financial support and success, um, you would want to move to a certain line that would best harness that energy. So you would want to move to a Sun MC line or a Jupiter MC line or a Venus descendant line. These are lines that would best support you 
you as an artist or as a public figure. Um, if you want to launch a business, if you want to really succeed in your endeavors, those are lines where you're really going to shine and have good luck and blessings bestowed upon you. I like to think of Jupiter as the sign of opportunity. So I believe that we make our own luck in this world, but opportunities are more presented to you on Jupiter lines. Uh, I am currently living on a Venus IC line, so this has to do with beauty in the home, simple joys, slow living, feeling a sense of peace and joy at home and in my private life. But I also have that Saturn on the um, Ascendant also right there with me uh, in France. And so I'm feeling this sense of restriction and a feeling of having gained knowledge and wisdom, but in a harder way. And there's a feeling of stuckness with Saturn and that you can't really move forward or fully shine because of that sense of restriction or being stuck that comes with Saturn. Aside from the planets and understanding the planetary meanings and the relationships that they form with other planets, you also want to know about the two interior angles and the two exterior angles with astrocartography. The two interior angles are the ascendant, which is the AS symbol that you'll see on your map. The ascendant means you. It's about the self. It's about your appearance, your vitality, your energy, and also how you come across in the world. It's how you show up. It's a lot of focus on the self. Their interior line is the IC. The IC has to do with your home and private life, your family, your parents, your personal private life, and how you feel a sense of home and belonging where you live. So if you live, for example, on a moon IC line, you're gonna feel a very emotional sense of feeling at home and belonging. You're gonna feel that connection with the emotions and desires at home. The IC has to do with feeling a sense of home and belonging. So it's your private life. It's what's happening behind the scenes at your home. So if you lived on a moon IC line, for example, you may feel very emotional, uh, feeling like you have many desires or an emotional attachment to your home life and your private life. The two exterior angles are the MC, which is how you are affected socially and in your career life. So this has to do with your public life, your career, you know, success, reputation, anything where you're in the public eye is gonna be the central focus of the MC line. So if you're a more private person, don't go to an MC line, especially like a sun MC line. You know, if you're more public and you wanna shine, go to a sun MC line. The other exterior angle is the descendant or the DS symbol on the map. And that is all has to do with your relationships with other people. So friendships, community, coworkers, your marriage, love. I always say if you're looking for an amazing love life or finding your partner, go to a Venus descendant line, go to a Jupiter descendant line, moon descendant line, like go to a line that's really focused on relationships with others. Um, that's all the descendant. It's also what you are drawn to in other people and how other people are drawn to you. So if you live on a very positive descendant line, people will feel very inspired by you and you will be very inspired by the people surrounding you. So descendants great for relationships. When you pull up your astrocartography map, you may see several lines in a particular place, uh, especially near the poles, like Finland, Scandinavia area or down south. When there is an area that has a lot of lines and they're all intersecting one another, that's a lot of energy for one person to handle. I recommend going to an area that has one line or two supportive lines, or one supportive line and one challenging line, so it has that nice balance of lessons and growth and support. Another spot, another spot to keep in mind when you're looking at your map is the lunar nodes. The node is a feeling of deja vu. It's a sense of familiarity, of having been there before. I have a theory that possibly the node could be past life related. Um, you've been there before, it feels familiar, it's a feeling of deja vu, of connection, of karmic 
goodness, like karmic lessons to be had on that line. So I always love going to lunar nodes because they're just, they're very karmic and feeling and it's quite special. So how the energy works on a line is the closer you are to the line, the more you're gonna feel it, the more intense you're gonna feel it. You're gonna feel it very intensely if you're right on a line. You're also gonna feel it very intensely when there's an intersection, which creates an entity. And that's gonna tell a deeper story on your soul lessons and missions in that place. Also, if you see a circle, like a dot on the line, that's where you're gonna feel it the most intensely on the map, that specific energy. The orb of influence is the energy that radiates from that line. So you can feel the energy from that line. I think it's up to 400 miles away. Um, so you can still feel it even if you're quite far away from it, but just know that the closer you get to it, the more intensely you're gonna feel it. So that's just a quick little intro to astrocartography. Feel free to check out your map on astro.com. It's really fun. Uh, I've been studying it for four years. When I moved to France, I really got into it and I, I've just been obsessed ever since. It is my passion my passion. I love astrology and travel, so it's just the perfect little niche for me. And as I mentioned before, I uniquely specialize in astrocartography readings, so if you'd like to go deeper, and I'd love to connect with you through a video call, we could go deep into your map, and I'd be happy to work with you and share you more details. Um, you can find more information on my website, HelenaWoods.com, where I share all my information on the readings, but other than that, I hope you found this video fun and different and interesting it's such a cool topic. It's so, I'm so passionate about it. Uh, never before have we been able to travel so much. I mean, obviously not now because of the pandemic, but in general, you know, starting in the 1960s, we were, we started getting on planes and traveling to different parts of the world. And now we can plan our trips and we can plan our moves and where we want to live and retire and all those things. We can maximize the benefits and the supportive planetary energy to best live a fun, vibrant, and growth-filled life. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up. That really helps to support the growth of this channel. Leave a comment down below as well, letting me know what you think about this. I'd love to hear from you your thoughts. Before I forget, I was also recently interviewed on a podcast, so I will include that podcast link down below all about astrocartography. And I've also written a blog post so that you can see visually all the planetary meanings and the angles and their meanings that you can look that up when you look at your chart. So other than that, I hope you have such a beautiful, magical day, kindred spirit, and I'll see you next time here on the channel. Bye.